Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And for this video, I'm going to be showing y'all an epic combination of mods so you can play as an epic gunslinging bounty hunter or outlaw. So first off, you may notice that I'm in a desert environment, and that's from Desperado's Overhaul in Badlands 2. I recently made an entire video dedicated to transforming the Commonwealth into a desert. So if you're curious about that, then you may want to check out that video right after this one. This video in particular is kind of like a part 2, but it'll be focusing more on in-game mechanics. Before we go out into the Wild West though, you may want an outfit to look the part. And my favorite one is the Mojave Manhunter by Niero. This one fits the role of a post-apocalyptic gunslinger perfectly. It's got an overall old western aesthetic while still looking sleek and modern. If you want to get your hands on it, you'll have to craft it at the chem station. You can also take it to the workbench where you can change up a few accessories and color schemes. But if you truly want to become an expert gunslinger, then you'll absolutely want to try out VAF's Redux. This mod gets rid of the old VAT system and replaces it with a manual version instead. No longer are you going to be clicking on body parts and taking your chances with an automated system. The aiming is up to you. All it does is slow it down to make it a bit easier. So basically, it functions like the Deadeye mechanic from Red Dead Redemption, but you can't paint your targets. Or really, it's like an alternative to Jet. But instead of consuming drugs, it consumes action points. The mod also introduces some perk changes to work with the new manual system, so you don't have to worry about your VATS perks being useless. Getting the mod to work is pretty easy. All you gotta do is pull up its configuration menu and set a hotkey for VAF's activation, as well as a critical hotkey. While you're here, you can also configure a whole bunch of settings to balance the system to your liking. I'm a huge fan of this mod, and I find it to be a whole lot more fun than the vanilla VAT system, because it's more engaging and way cooler as well. Not only that, but it fits perfectly for a true gunslinger build. For the cherry on top, you should also download Wild West VAT sound effects. It replaces the boring vanilla VATS audio with sounds from the good, the bad, and the ugly theme. A simple, yet effective change. If you're wondering what guns I'm using throughout the video, well, I won't be showcasing them individually in this video, but I will make sure to link the mods in the description. Additionally, you could also check out my top 5 revolver videos if you want some neat sidearms to suit this playthrough. Anyway, that's enough plugging of my own content. Let's get into some more mechanics here. One thing that I always despised about Fallout 4 is how the role-playing mechanics got dumbed down compared to previous titles. You're more or less expected to be a goody two-shoes that goes around helping settlers. There's not any mechanics in place should you deviate from that path. And overall, the Commonwealth justice system is overly simplistic and always ends up with someone dying as a result. If you're looking to bring some law and order to the wasteland, or just add to the chaos yourself, then you'll need a mod called Crime and Punishment. It's a huge overhaul mod, so there's a lot to get into. Just looking at the configuration menu here, you can see all the different mechanics it adds in. You'll definitely want to take some time to explore this menu and configure some settings. I'll start with Karma. Firstly, you'll need to make sure to turn it on and apply a template. After that, the game will track many actions that you do. The Karma system works kind of like it did in Fallout New Vegas. You do bad things, you get bad Karma. And if you do good, then you get good Karma. It doesn't have a huge effect on gameplay though but there are a couple of unique features. During dialogue, you can use your karma as currency to increase your chances of passing a speech check. Make sure to set the hotkey for it in the MCM though. Other than that, karma will also affect how much your settlers like you. If you have good karma, then they'll love you, but if you're an evil person, then they won't be so happy. If you regret your past mistakes, then you can request absolution from Pastor Clemens in Diamond City for a fee, of course. Unfortunately, in my game here, Clemens met an untimely end, so I wasn't able to request his service. Uh, moving on now. Crime and Punishment also introduces a combat surrender system. When your opponents are certain of their defeat, they just may surrender and hope for your mercy. If you approach them, you can do several actions. You can let them go, rob them, enslave them, or just kill them on the spot. You can also rob NPCs from outside of combat through the holdup system. To activate it, Hold down your activate key for a few seconds, which is E by default. Then aim at an NPC, preferably a puny settler, and you'll then be able to rob them at gunpoint. Be careful though, because some of them may not go down without a fight. 
Likewise, enemies can also do the same back to you, if you surrender that is. In the configuration menu, you can set your character to automatically surrender when below a specific health threshold, or set a hotkey to do so. Either way, once you surrender in combat, your enemy will approach you, and you can try to weasel your way out of the situation through bribery, and they just might let you go. If not, then they'll probably rob you and beat you up. In such a case, you'll wake up at one of your settlements and be given the chance to get your loot back. In this case, my robber came right back to where I was. Not sure why he did that, but I digress. Another outcome, though, is getting kidnapped. Should that happen, you'll be transported to a stronghold and made a prisoner with an explosive collar. You'll then have to take out the leader of the area to get the key to your collar. And there should also be a chest nearby holding all of your stuff. After that, you can then make your daring escape. I will admit, this system only makes sense on a survival playthrough without quick saving, maybe even a permadeath run. Otherwise, there's no reason for you to surrender when you can just load your save from 5 minutes ago. Another neat mechanic that's added is the disguise system. You can craft disguises at the chem station for various factions. Wearing the correct disguise allows you to bypass enemies as long as you're not acting too suspicious. You can then use that to your advantage and perform a stealthy takedown on them from behind which is also added in by this mod. So essentially, you can now play Among Us in Fallout 4. Now I hate myself for saying that. Anyway, there's some other mechanics too, but that's uh, adult content, and I don't care too much for that, so I won't bother to cover it in this video. On to the next subject, is crime. Along with karma, your crimes will be tracked, and if you're caught in the act, you can always surrender and be put in jail. Get off your knees. You look like a jackass. What the hell are you doing? Uh, I'm here to pick up an order. Two large pepperoni and a calzone. Name is... Fuck you. Whatever. You're going to serve time just like everyone else. You'll spend a short time here, and once you're released, you can get your stuff back from a chest in the security office. If you don't like being locked up though, then you can always run away from your problems. But you just might end up getting a bounty on your head, provided that your crimes were serious enough. If you were to nuke the entire citizenry of Diamond City per se, then you'll surely get some highly trained bounty hunters on you. They may take a few days to find you, but they will run into you eventually as you explore the wasteland. Once confronted, you can try to talk your way out of it, surrender, or just kill them all, which will put you in the clear for a few days. If you choose to surrender, then you'll be cuttered off to Diamond City Jail. And if your crimes were too heinous, then you just might end up being put to death. Unfortunately for me, the scene wasn't able to load properly, probably because I killed everyone in Diamond City. On the other side of things, you can choose to use your powers for good and enlist yourself as a bounty hunter. To do so, you'll have to talk to this lady in Diamond City Jail, and she'll hook you up with some contracts to hunt down. Doing so will grant you positive karma for killing baddies, and a good stash of caps along with it. I think these are infinitely repeatable, so consider them a new type of radiant quest. If you're interested in more jobs like that, then Gun For Hire is the mod for you. It's published by the same mod author who brought us crime and punishment. So they work together quite nicely. This mod adds in a new location, just right outside of Diamond City, which you can use as your new business office. Once you hire an assistant, they'll supply you with plenty of contracts to fulfill, which have more variety than just bounty hunting. In the mod configuration menu, you can set it to where your business needs to gain reputation before taking on the more difficult jobs. Or just set it to easy mode, so you can enjoy the whole lot from the start. There's a whole slew of different jobs to do. Kill contracts, escorts, or even rescue missions, and so on. If you complete the contract, you'll gain reputation and caps. But if you fail, then your reputation will take a hit. As long as you succeed, then it's a pretty good method to earn caps in the earlier half of the game, while also encouraging you to explore the map. And of course, it's pretty dang fun to roleplay as a mercenary boss. But if you want to be more than just a mercenary, and start your own band of outlaws instead, then you'll want to download Sim Settlements Conqueror. It's an add-on to the well-known Sim Settlements mod. For the sake of this video, I'll just be focusing on what's added in by Conqueror. Also, this currently only works for the older version of Sim Settlements, not the sequel. Anyway, this mod allows you to become the leader of your very own raider gang in the Commonwealth. It's kind of like how the Nuka World Raiders work, but this is an entirely new gang with its own special questline. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you need to start a new gang 
game for the initial quest to show up. Once you stroll into Concord, you'll run into a raider chilling on a rooftop. He'll give you a proposition to kill the opposing gang of raiders, and even the Miniman squad in the museum if you so please. Once you complete the task, you can further help him out and do quests to build up your raider gang, which includes killing leaders of several gangs. Jammer will do the recruiting in the meantime. There's also several side quests you can do to further help out your gang, but the main part is taking over settlements and asserting dominance across the commonwealth. To start your reign of terror, you'll have to craft a war planner's desk in a settlement, and from there, you can manage your little outlaw empire. Like I mentioned earlier, this works very similar to its Nuka World equivalent. You can take over settlements and establish outposts or vassals, and then enslave the settlers that were once there. Just make sure to watch out for rival gang attacks, and keep your settlers and gang members in line, so that they don't revolt against you. This mod also includes the option to have settlements already built into little shack cities. That way, you won't have much building to do once you move in. However, I decided to keep the option off, because it can really drag your performance down. Hopefully at some point, this mod will be updated to work with the new and improved Sim Settlements 2, but that may be a while from now. Nonetheless, this is a pretty sweet mod to try out, and it provides a refreshing experience if you're looking for an evil alternative to the Minutemen. Alright, that's all I got for this video. I hope y'all will have fun with the mods I showed in this video, because I know I sure have. If you liked this video and found it helpful, then go ahead and quick draw on the like button. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And I'll see y'all in the next video.